So like that. So look here, I'm gonna get back with you beautiful people. I love why Washington is a beautiful city. Yeah. Man. It's, it's beautiful. I compare it to Toronto. There you go. Uh, there when you I came go. out the war I was searching for a city. When I came yeah. I, I was stationed in England, man. Right. Nineteen seventy mass communication squadron, Lake East England. I was an air traffic control over there. Mm-hmm. I was about nineteen to twenty then. Mm-hmm. But then when I came back to you know, from overseas, man, Toronto was going through the same thing that Washington is going through now. It's just gonna be the beautiful city, quiet as it's kept. Mm-hmm. You know, they talking about Atlanta. But uh, I don't think so, because I've been all over the world. Mm-hmm. And I've been just observing. That's why I'm here. Mm-hmm. What do you think I'm here? I'm wasting my time. <laughs> right on. Hey, man, let me tell you, I came through here in 67, right? right. In 67, I came through here on, on with with the ticket in my hand and some orders to report to Camp Lejeune down in North Carolina. Right. I was in the service, right? So, right. hey, man, like, I was here for about 15 days. Right. In 15 days, I met some people, and they just... You know, they, they can run you around the city quick, buddy. You know, some people do it to you overnight. So you just really give you, give you heartache. So when you run away from here, you just say, oh, Washington, 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 you know, Washington. So for 10 days, and then I had the opportunity to go to, to, to down to North Carolina, Jacksonville, which is a know nothing, do nothing, see nothing, <laughs> down. <laughs> right? And, uh, right quick, having just come back from, from overseas, what have you, got in a unit that was, Getting ready to go overseas in, in 40 days. I said, hey, no way, man. So I got me some, got my orders changed after going through some changes. And ended up at uh, about 30 miles outside of Washington, a place called Quantico. Right. So, and doing that, I finally got me some quarters off base. So I stayed in D.C. I've been in Washington, D.C. ever since. Hey, this, man. <laughs> Let me tell you what I was thinking at, man. I was thinking at, uh, uh, for six months, man, I was stationed at, uh, Keesler Air Force Base, Biloxi, Mississippi, man, at Air Traffic Control School. Boy, mm-hmm. boy. Yeah, man, you know, like, uh, and this is what turned me around, man. Uh, like, you know, we from Detroit. I mean, we used to just, you know, being civilized anyway, you know. So, me and, uh, quite well, we came down on, you know, on the same flight going from a midterm break from tech school. Right, right. And this is what blew my mind is when, how the people can, uh, when we were going in the restaurant, Put you out the restaurant. You got a blue uniform on with U.S. on your lapel. Right. You understand? Right. You understand? Put you out. That's right. Not to you. Yeah. But man, this is what got me though. The dude, he said, "Well, look here, man. That's not right." And so we had, you know, what we did? Had just integrated. Well, what? Went across there, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, so this is what be on people's mind when they stand up there and ask you why you don't stand up at the football game talking about. uh Oh, say can you see? <laughs> right. See? Yeah. So, like, uh, well, uh, there's some Detroit brothers here, and you know how we do a boy, you yeah. know, uh, and so, uh, we try and act intelligent. You know, the man is, you know, thanks. So, I heard it and discovered all over there, and, uh, there I am, you know, so we ain't worried about a thing. <laughs> we got somewhere to go. Y'all get y'all some news together. <laughs> Stop buying them out. El Dorado, get you something that'll float across from here to there, and uh, we'll see what we can do. You know, they discovered, oh, you know where the car run on. <laughs> Precious metals over there, too, like gold, that, you know, whatever. So, uh, you know, you had to come back to Mother Earth. Just because you was born in the oven, that doesn't make you a biscuit. You know, <laughs> so, uh, you can't <laughs> get it together. And my brother from Detroit, he knows, because he knows that's where the ultimate oppression is, where they, they smile at your face, give you all opportunity, but when you go to open that last door, it seems like somehow you get sent down the milk chute, you know. <laughs> okay, check, I'll check with you later. This all is right. uh, Detroit, Mike. Bye. Okay, Mike. Thanks for calling. Yeah. Okay, bye. Bye, bye. Two nine one seven zero four five. We took a so we went from music to everything. Right. Right. <laughs> but you he know, he, he brought us some good points. Yes. You know, it's a funny thing. A lot of people say, "Wow, man, you got a crazy show." People be cracking up, laughing. But you know, I find that those things that you laugh at, same some of the same things that make you cry, man. That's right. When you stop and think of them. He, he mentioned he mentioned the thing, man, that I always say now. <laughs> about the North and the South. I was born and raised in West Virginia until I came here. Uh, but one thing that I found out from the South, uh, the South is no, really no 
different from mm -hmm. the north. Even sometimes the south is even better mm -hmm. because down there they let you know there you go. where yeah. you stand. Right, right. And here, hey man, uh, they tell you you stand everywhere, mm -hmm. but they 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 give you that treatment to let you know where you stand. You understand? So hey, don't don't you know? Don't be trying to. Uh, uh, a two phase of wishy wash me. Mm -hmm. Let me know. You but you know what, what, what Brother Mike was saying is very mm -hmm. true. Now, a lot of people think that the further north they go, hey, the hipper it is. Mm -hmm. you know? Hey, man, but it's, 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 you know, it's like a thing of, <laughs> it's one thing is, it's that like, you know, when you go to war, you can deal with war. A lot of people don't think you can, but you can deal with war for the simple fact that you know a, a lot of times who the, number one, you know who the enemy is. That's right. And the one thing that you, you deal with is just trying to keep on top of where he's at. That's, right. That's another thing. But see, here, when you further north you go, is you have an idea of, hey, the number one, just because of the way situation has been, is that, hey, like, you know, I'd be watching this situation. But you don't really watch it because, you know, it's like they jump on your back. Hey, brother, mm -hmm. you know. And they know the handshake before you learn the right. shake, you know, that kind of stuff. You know? right. But at the same influence, time, influence, that's, influence, right. Influence, that's right. When you get yeah. ready to deal with the Golden Gate, you send you right back to that greasy hole. You know? So you got to go. Listen, 291-7045, feel the music is what we... Uh, our basic topic is about, <laughs> but you know, I, I I enjoy when you just can go along like this. You know, yeah. feel the music. Two nine one seven zero four five. Special guest brother Max Kid, and uh, we're trying to get into some of the tunes and artists that are coming out of Washington. Here's a song we played uh, a couple of days ago on the Make It or Break It show, and uh, it seems like it's really taken off. It's done for you by a young man that both Max and I know very well, um, Milt Matthews. Before we play the tune, what what, what do you think about brother Milt? I mean, he's been he's been doing. I can remember when I first started here at Wook in '69, and just came on here as a cowboy and what have you. And I remember Milk coming over to seeing Ernie Fields, who was our program director and music director at that time. And uh, I can remember Milk like Milk just Milk hung around here. He became like a. At one time, I thought he was employed here. <laughs> you know, but it was he was just getting started, get this record, getting getting off into the music thing and what have you. And uh, uh, brother Ernie, Ernie liked him, you know. Ernie said, "Okay, we'll do a deal with his record." And uh, ever since then, pew, you know. Milk, man, I, I I go back as far as '63 with Milk, man. And it was a guy named Bob Lee. I don't think you.